conversation, I believe, that'll hit the core, gonna hit the core here, of many of you. And I know that with certainty because it's a shift that hit the core of me. And it's one of the things that I hear the most in individuals, especially entrepreneurs that reach out to me um, you know, throughout the years. A lot of you guys know that uh, obviously leading two, um, two companies right now uh, and with both Vi and Live, I have a chance of interacting with a ton of aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, and I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions directly at events. I get a lot of questions, you know, through Instagram, questions through a lot of the mentor programs. And I think the shift that I want to talk about here today is probably one of the greatest and most difficult, if I were to be really direct, shifts that people need to make. First, I want to talk about an addiction. An addiction that I think most people have today and what's scary about this addiction is most people don't even realize they're addicted. See, there's a, addictions that people have that maybe are more obvious to ourselves, maybe addictions we have that are more obvious to others that can help, but this is an addiction that so many people have today, yet so many people don't even realize they have it. And the addiction that I'm talking about is an addiction to acceptance, an addiction to the need to be accepted by other people. It's an acceptance addiction. We have an acceptance disease. We are in the middle of an acceptance epidemic. It is something that most people have is spreading like wildfire. We're passing to our next generations. Yet most people don't even realize that they're addicted. How do I know this? I'm a former addict. <laughs> um, I look back, and for those of you guys that know my story, right, I always have had kind of the, the story of the stereotypical achiever, right? So if I go back to kind of the, the first phase of life where we spent all our time in a classroom, you know, people go, oh, yeah, I managed to do well in school, right? I graduated, you know, high school with a nearly perfect GPA, right? A 4.2. Um, I graduated, you know, college with a nearly perfect GPA, right? You know, cum laude. And I look back and I go, okay, well, why did I do that? Was it because I loved learning? Was it because I loved the topics? Was it because I loved sitting in school instead of surfing down the street? No. Was it, was it because I loved getting the grades personally? No. I was addicted to the acceptance. When I did it and I got the grade, I felt accepted by the people around me. Wow, you're so smart. Wow, you did so good. Wow, how did you do that? It was a, an acceptance that drove me to go put in the work, skip the fun, not go to the party, study hard. It was an acceptance addiction. I look at my early career as an entrepreneur, right? You know, grind, 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 do, 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 work, 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 more, 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 nonstop. And sure, it drove me to the top, right? I mean, I, I made my first million by 25 years old, shoot. I did that tens of times over by age 30, right? I mean, I, people, people go, you built a $2 billion company by your early 30s? That's freaking ridiculous. And you guys, don't get me wrong, like there's a lot of value that comes from that. There's a lot of greatness that comes from that. But if I were to be really honest, of okay, what drove me, especially in my early years, to do all of that, it was an addiction. An addiction to be accepted, an addiction to prove, right, others wrong, an addiction to prove that I was enough. For those of you guys that are achievers out there, a lot of the things that drives people to achieve, to perform, unfortunately has to do with an addiction to acceptance. And some of you guys may be going, well, Blake, I don't see anything wrong with that, right? If you have an addiction to acceptance that allows you to achieve, to excel, to perform, to do all that, isn't that a good thing? And I'll say that it can be if your interest or focus is on the result. And it, 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 and it can be if the people you're trying to please and the standards that they're setting are in a direction that you actually want to go. It can move you. But here's the problem. If you're constantly doing what you're doing because you need the acceptance of others. The direction that you're going is not in your control. 
you're gonna constantly be running a direction based on what you think other people want to think of you. It's like someone else is in control of the navigation of your life. It's like you're making decisions to go a certain way because of what you may think you may get from somebody else. The pat on the back, the that a boy, right? The A grade, right? The, the paycheck. And it can work for you as long as that direction is where you want to go, where you're meant to go. But here's what I've found so often. A lot of times, even the achievers, you get to the top of the mountain and then you all of a sudden look back and you're like, man, this isn't even the mountain that I wanted to run up. And then what happens is people get there and they go, wow, I got here, I did the work, this is what I was supposed to do. How come I'm not happy? How come I don't feel like a winner? How come I'm not fulfilled? I was supposed to do this, I did the work, everybody else is happy for me, but how come I don't feel like I thought I would? And the answer to that, guys, is you did it for the wrong reason. You did it for the acceptance or the applause or what you thought other people may think of you when you got there. And it doesn't matter how far you go, how high you climb, how much money you make or where you end up. If you're doing it for the acceptance, you're never going to feel like you got to the finish line you thought you were chasing. See, the sad fact is most people are living their life trying to make other people happy. And the big irony is most people are doing things to please people they may not even like. Most people are even doing things to please people that aren't even living a life they want to live. Most people are doing things every day to please somebody else they wouldn't even want to trade places with. Most people are doing things every day to get the that a boy, the high five, the great job from people they don't even look up to. Wow, do we have this backwards. Where you spend your life chasing an acceptance from people that aren't even living the life that you want and see for yourself. Wow. Maybe that's your boss, right? Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a mentor. Social media ain't helping this, right? Social media is not helping this at all, right? We're sitting there saying, okay, well, what's going to get the likes? What's going to get the comments? What's going to get the shares? And I won't go deeper in this topic, guys, of how we got here. I've studied it a lot. Like, how do we get to a place where we're in an acceptance epidemic? And it's a series of events, right? It's a series of events going back to many of us grew up at a time where, you know, parents were working and had to work. So they didn't have the time when we were young. So we have this deep rooted need to chase the acceptance to be enough. And because we didn't get it when we were young, we're still chasing it and we don't even know it. I won't go that deep. I won't go that deep in terms of we grew up in a time. I talk about this in my TED talk where the industrial revolution was tailoring off, but we still had systems in place where we needed people to follow the rules. We needed people to stay in line. We needed people to conform creativity, innovation outside the box. That was looked at as a risk to the assembly line, a risk to going out there and getting a job done. So we created systems and structures to get people addicted to the acceptance of others. Grades, gotta get the A. What happened here with the C? timeouts, detentions, all this stuff, guys, were systems put in place to control which built the need and reinforced the need. I won't go into all of that, but it is what it is, and we're in an acceptance epidemic, and it's an epidemic because, guys, it's a silent killer. You don't know it. You don't see it. A lot of times, people outside could be performing and achieving and looking like, wow, they're doing everything they want to do, but at the end of the day, they don't feel it because they're doing it for the wrong reasons. Let me know if this is helping you. Am I striking a chord? Do you guys know anybody out there that 
that is chasing the acceptance? Do you know anybody out there that it's driving an action? Do you know anybody out there that's like, man, I don't feel, you know, motivated right now, right? You know, oh man, I can't seem to stay consistent because you're bouncing around trying to please other people. You guys, it's a never ending, never ending journey. If you're constantly trying to get the acceptance of others, you'll never have it. There's always a next. It's never ending. You'll never reach it. You'll never get there. Okay, I've been talking long enough. So some of you guys are like, well, Blake, what the heck? What do I got to shift to? <laughs> okay, um, if I'm striking a chord, give me some hearts. If I'm striking a chord, give me a hell yes in the comments. If this is resonating, give me a hell yes in the comments. If there's anybody that this is coming into your mind, a man, so-and-so needs to hear this. Tag them, tag them, tag them, tag them, tag them. The more people that see this, the more people can get impact. Let me give you the shift. I think we need to shift from acceptance to desire. The word is desire. And I'll quantify the word desire by saying that desire comes from within. It's an internal drive, not an external drive. It's an intrinsic motivation. It comes from you. A desire means it's something that you are driven to do for your own purposes, not for the like on Instagram, not for the review from the boss, not from the grade on the report card, not for the bonus at the job, not for the pat on the back, not for the that a boy, not for the trophy, not for the stage. From within. Think and Grow Rich. Read it if you haven't. The Bible of Entrepreneurship, first chapters, burning desire. A burning desire. A burning desire from within. You got to do it for yourself. You got to have a drive for yourself. You can't be chasing the opinions of others, good or bad. You got to realize that the opinions of others really have nothing to do with your opinion of yourself. The opinions of others really have nothing to do or should have nothing to do with your opinion of yourself. How do you get to a burning desire? My opinion is you get to a burning desire once you connect your purpose and your mission to where you're investing your life. Your purpose, taking your talents and your gifts and putting them in a direction to serve others purpose is about others, your mission, how you're going to do that, your mission that you're on, your specific niche, your specific talents, your specific lane, right? How you're going to do that. And then where are you investing your life? Are you putting your time in alignment with your mission and your purpose? When you get alignment of those things, it's impossible not to have desire. How do you not have desire? How do you not stay motivated? How do you not stay consistent? How do you not put your life into a direction when, you're, when you, what you do with your time and your energy matches your talents and your gifts and your personal desires and is con in connection with an impact you're making on other people? When those are in alignment, how are you not motivated, inspired, consistent? And then guys, the reality is you may not need the acceptance of everybody else. You may not need the data boys. You're not doing it for that. But the reality is you're, it's all going to come anyway. You'll still get it when you don't need it. When you're investing your life because of your own personal desire, as opposed to letting somebody else take the navigation, drive the wheel. We got to make the shift. We got to make the shift. We got to make the shift. So that's my message for today, guys. Make the shift from acceptance to desire. And not only are you going to go further, faster, make a bigger impact on more people longer, but you're going to feel a whole lot better, not just when you get there, but the whole journey along the way, because that's the whole point.
Hey guys, you tell me, are these valuable? Is it worth me taking breaks in the middle of my runs? Because if I stop in the middle of a run, I'm in the middle of a run <laughs> in the only place I think on this mountain that has Wi-Fi. Um, or not Wi-Fi, but data. Is this worth it? Is it worth me doing this? Are you getting value from it? If you're getting value from it, tell me below. If you're really getting value from it, best thing you can do to return the favor is share it. Because the only reason I take the stop is to make an impact. And the more people that see it, the bigger the impact it can be. You can do it two ways. You can tag people that pop into your mind. Tag them, tag them, tag them, tag them, tag them. Them. Or if you feel like everybody should see this right now, or you don't know who on your friends really has the acceptance addiction, then just share it. Go click share and tell people that they need to watch this. Love you guys. Happy Saturday. Hope you had a great week. Get, have an amazing weekend. Get ready for a great week ahead. Make the shift. Make the shift. Let's get rid of the acceptance epidemic and let's make the shift to a personal desire. You have it in you. You can do it. Appreciate all of you guys. Tag and share. I got to go finish my run. Happy Saturday, everybody.